for those who are familiar with this concept. There's nothing I'm needing to explain about it, and for those who are not, uh, you can learn about that from reading the Paralandra Garden Workbook by Michelle Small Wright, or you can get some idea about it from the Elves of Lily Hill Farm by Penny Kelly. And uh, here we're going to have a more general focus on Michelle Small Wright's uh, Soilless Garden Manual or Companion. Soilless Garden Companion is also um, relevant. But I'm going to assume that you can do your own reading on that, separate from uh, this video and separate from learning something about the use of the self, or independently from, it's not separate really, but, and So I was going to say, if you are familiar with this, you already know what conscious co-creating with nature is, but that's not quite true because it's an endless journey into the unknown. So, but you've had experiences that went beyond what you had known previously. So we could define the activity as experimenting into the unknown. Interestingly, Alexander described his method as reasoning from the known into the unknown. Uh, And co-creating with nature's intelligence could be termed as listening to something that knows more than oneself. So listening from the known to, into the unknown. And I just want to emphasize, this is not a video about how to do the Alexander Technique in application to the activity of co-creating with nature so much as it is a video about how does Alexander's discovery about the choices we have in how we use ourselves illuminate the activity of co-creating with nature. Particularly, what does it reveal as blind spots, as assumptions that we might have been putting in the way of the full, true conscious co-creating of nature's intelligence. In other words, if I'm acting on a belief that I have to pull down in order to think clearly, now I'm less available to hear what nature's intelligence is actually telling me versus if I'm here, something like this, or at any rate, letting go of doing this, whatever, whatever else emerges. I don't want to define that even. I spent five minutes just doing an introduction to the, the topic here, but I think it's worth taking, taking the time. So, let's say you have a goal to start 
disturb a healing practice, giving massage. Uh, we've already in some way defined the how, which is nature's job. What is the what, which the, the real core of the desire. I want to be of service, I want to be loving people, I want to be feeling love for them, I want to be feeling approval of myself for being a loving being, I want to be touching others, I want to have the tactile experience of feeling them against my fingertips, my hands, whatever it is, massage therapists use elbows, feet. Uh, I want that closeness, that intensity. Um, those are, they, maybe those are all really the DDP, the, the goal, even more than um, I want to start a massage practice. <clears throat> So as I'm thinking about having those things, I can ask myself, what do I notice about myself? And that's not to say narrowing my attention down into only myself. It is to say not narrowing my attention into only the external world. So I might notice I'm holding a little on my right shoulder, for example. And I might then think, oh, let me let that go, let me relax that. But but if I relax that based on my own kinesthetic sense. I could be narrowing my attention down into just that one area of myself and ignoring the whole of me and world. If instead I simply allow that awareness to inform what I do next, if I recognize that the shoulder didn't just tense itself, but I had a part in that, I had, I made a choice that caused my <clears throat> another part of myself to tense my shoulder, put it that way. So my shoulder didn't tense itself separately for me, but I also maybe didn't think, oh, let me tense my shoulder, that's gonna solve my problem in a fully thought out way. It wasn't my primary focus. But still, I tensed my shoulder. A part of me said, okay, I gotta tense my shoulder. So simply having the awareness I may be, able, may be able to choose something with less of that the next time. What's going on right now is more important than whatever went on in the past.